before your presentation starts, I'd like to take a few moments to introduce you to the City of London Dental School. We are a private postgraduate dental school based in London and run from our college facility at Southgate. Here we offer a number of uh, various programmes, both short and degree programmes. At present we offer six MSc titles validated by the University of Bolton. These include clinical dentistry, orthodontics, periodontology, focal therapy and endodontics, uh, restorative and aesthetic dentistry and the specialist practice of restorative aesthetic dentistry combined with implantology. These are delivered from our state-of-the-art teaching facilities and to be introduced shortly are three more new titles. We're also introducing the MSc in the specialist clinical practice of aesthetic non-surgical interventions. This is to do with uh, facial cosmetics the MSc in the Specialist Practice of Computer Guided Implantology. This is implantology but taught from a digital perspective. Also a combined MSc of Restorative Aesthetic Dentistry with Implantology. These programmes are all taught from our laboratories where hand-on uh, experience is required, where delegates get the opportunity to use the latest digital uh, equipment, printing materials, scanners, and also to practice prep techniques on phantoms. Our short programs are in topics such as implantology, restorative and orthodontics. These programs normally last anywhere between four to 12 months. We also offer clinical internships in the UK and the UAE, where delegates get to treat patients directly. In addition to this, we offer diploma and certificate programs. These programs are at HE level seven, so they're university certificates, which means that they can be used towards MSc programs, not just MSc programs that are offered by the City of London, but also other programs. So thank you for sparing the time to listen to this presentation. If you want any more information, then please contact us at info at cityoflondondentalschool.co.uk. I hope you enjoy your presentation today. This is the most crucial part. And when I go through different lectures or, um, or pictures, I see a lot of things are not done well with considering ligature. So, one of the emphasis today is absolutely the ligatures we use or we've been taught to use. Because you can apply this knowledge to any um, fixed phrase system you want because it doesn't change. So when we look about um, this um, system of um, e praise or incognito or win, or lingual matrix, whatever they are called, we have to consider that in a system like this, we have to ask what is the wire orientation in which area. So we do know that um, in this system, we have in the anterior region, we have a vertical insertion, which means um, we have good control over rotation, we have good control over torque, like root movement, and we have not good control in vertical, in tipping because we have a vertical open slot. In the horizontal packet, so I'll just shift that further up or maybe up here. In a horizontal packet with a single wing, we have in generally a good tip control, but it could be better. We have problems with rotation because the wire wants to disengage of the horizontal slot, but we don't have any problem vertically. So these are the main difference between a front bracket and a back bracket. So again, with the e brace, you will have the option of theoretically also order horizontal insertion in anterior. So obviously, if you have a lot of tip problems in the anterior, you could consider ordering horizontal insertion in anterior instead of vertical insertion. So depending on the case you have, you can order 
different slot orientations. And then when we go further to the back, we have, of course, these twin brackets like we have on the buckle side as well, where we have a, a wider um, slot. Then, and the wider the slot, the more surface of wire is in the slot and we have more control. But again, torque, for example, if you do extension in any case like this, the wire can disengage and can't apply full torque unless you use a ligature that really holds the wire in that slot. So that's very, very important. And lastly, we have in the very back, generally, we have a, a tube, which means we insert the wire from the front or the back. So it's completely different, but the tube has a, has a wall on all four sides. So as soon as we fill this tube completely with a full-sized wire, like an 1825, we get the information we planned in the setup. So we have these four different situations here, and we need to think about the advantages and disadvantages of these different things. But what they have all in common, apart from the last packet with the tube, is that they all need a ligature to express full information that is in the wire and in the bracket. So if we don't use a good ligature, we lose information, and therefore we are not as efficient as we should do. Again, going back to what we discussed already um, on Tuesday, with the vertical insertion, horizontal insertion, and ribbon-wise wire, the orientation. So going back to that again, to visualize it, we have an 18 slot um, in the horizontal dimension, and we have a 25 inch in the vertical dimension. We have ribbon-wise orientation. But we have a wire, actually, that fills the slot completely. So also, if we have buckle systems, like for example, a Damon bracket, I think Damon bracket is something um, quite well known. They use a 22 times 25 inch slot. And uh, most cases, they are being finished in a 1925 Team A, which means that the dimension, the vertical dimension is not filled completely, so there's a play in the slot, and therefore they lose information in terms of root positioning. And that's one of the reasons why Damon, for example, offers a high and a low torque and standard torque. So three different brackets for the same tooth, so which can be quite complex in thinking. So if you have a bracket like this bracket here, when you do a good setup review, and we're going to talk about that um, after, you can make sure that you have full, at least, or a rotation control because we have a vertical slot in the interior. And you can be sure that you have full torque control when you have a vertical slot. So about these two things, you don't need to think about unless you fill the, the wire or the slot completely with the last wire. So when you go through a wire sequence in your cases, like for example, 014, 016, 1622 night tie, 1825 night tie. By the time you are in a 1622 or 1825 nickel titanium wire, you should make sure that the torque and the rotation is more or less correct. If it's not, there might be clinical problem or there might be something going not the right way. Like maybe uh, the packet is not on the right wire position. Because the theory is very clear. As soon as you fill the slot, you get full expression of your setup. So if you are in an 1825 night tie, which is normally the third wire in a sequence, the rotation and torque should have been expressed more or less, by about maybe 90, 95%. If that's not the case, then it's no point you going ahead in your wire sequence because something is going wrong. And what I've seen a lot is that people jump wires too quickly and they haven't, the wire that was inserted hasn't expressed itself to its full potential. So if we start a process, we need to understand what is expected from this wire. And, um, if we look at here as well as we have again this auxiliary slot here and this full size wire with here the 
change the hook with the undercut for the ligature. So we can initially, we can use the self-ligating slot, 040 night tie, yeah, which clicks in here. And then we can go in 016, for example, into the slot, then 1622. And, um, and after we can go in 1825. But after that, it should have been corrected more or less. So if we go again, so the advantage of an anterior vertical slot is that we have good rotation control and good torque control. And the only deciding point in rotation torque is thickness of wire. Only when it comes to tip or angulated teeth or vertical control, when we want to close an open pipe, we need a ligature. So that is the crucial part. And as ligatures, we have different things. We have the self-retaining slot. We have O-rings, for example, easy on from Pelz and Partner, the wind system uses. We have elastic modules from 3M. We have elastic over ties. We're going to talk about that. And we have steel ligatures. In the back, in horizontal, it's slightly different because we have a horizontal open slot. We have obviously problems in rotation, in transversal, and torque control. So for all these three things, we need a ligature to fully express that information. Tip and leveling is only decided by the vertical slot because we have a wall. And this is very important to understand. So if we, have, if we slide along a wire, for example, in extraction cases, or if we use elastics, we have to make sure that we fill the horizontal vertical component fully. That's very important. When we do expansion, or we need to express torque, we need to use a ligature that doesn't allow a wire to disengage of the slot. And that's very important. So just by using and a normal O-ring used for buckle technique on a lingual case, it will be not enough to express the full power. So it's something very, very important to understand. And again, we have different brackets. Um, like in this system, luckily, we have um, a twin molar bracket and a single bracket in premolar. But obviously, the more, the wider the slot, the more control you have in sliding, in, in torque, rotation, and leveling. But the E-brace, what is one of the things, again, which are very, very clever, they have something um, that they use. So they actually offer um, a, a brace that, they obviously offer a premolar bracket with two wings. So again, if the, all the other systems have only one wing here, but if you do, for example, an extraction case, you could order a double wing design on the premolars as well, which is unique. And that's an amazing opportunity um, to control tip. So if you wanted a double wing, you can get it and you have better stability of your case. Of course, because of this phenomenon, like the center of resistance is far away from where we place a bracket, as soon as we put forces in this area of the crown, we will generate a tipping and the wire will try to disengage. So sometimes initially we have basically no angulation problem, then we basically close some space and we are creating an angulation, which is obviously not the, which defeats the object. We should never make things worse than they are at the beginning. And if you don't use a, a good ligature, like for example, to avoid it, I would use a steel ligature, and we have to be really careful what we're doing. Yeah, so this wire orientation is very, very crucial to understand in any system you do. Yeah, sometimes you do O18 slots in a buckle technique. It doesn't matter which slot you use, it just matters that you understand what is being done. So now we want to go through the different types of ligatures. Yeah, we talked about the self-retaining um, slot of lower and upper anteriors. 
So in the incognito system or the wind system, you do not have a self-ligating slot in the upper front. You only do have that in the lower front. So in e brace, you do have that in upper and lower. It's very, very important. Oh. Let me just start the video. So uh, it's So then, of course, we have an, an O-ring, which is a, here you can't even see the O-ring. Because like Pels and Partner, they offer an O-ring in clear, black, and gray. So again, here I put that, I think, down last time as well. Pels and Partner is a company from Germany who specialize in lingual um, materials. So they, you, they offer you the easy on. And they are in different colors. Me personally, I prefer the clear one because when they stain, you know you need to replace it. This is how you place an O-ring, but I think it's very, very clear. So you go either from the top to the bottom or you go from the gingival to the inside. That's completely your choice. But you only use this ligature when a wire is passively in the slot. Passive means the wire doesn't want to disengage of the wire slot. Because if there's too much power on the wire that they want to come out of the slot, this ligature won't be able to hold the force too long. And then of course we have this ligature from 3M and the elastic, it's a very good ligature for over ties because it applies more power. In general, as for normal ligating, I don't use an elastic. I use it mainly for an, an, an over tie or tipping tie we will talk about because we have this additional um, securing grip here that makes it very easy to handle and grip with the mosquito and to pull over when we do, um, for example, the over ties. The company itself, they said initially, but that was a study of their own, that the forces and an elastic um, applies into the slot is the same as an overtie. An overtie is a ligature done with a power chain, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So the same here, you can either do it from the bottom to the top, or you can do it from the um, top to the bottom. It's completely your choice. What is very handy is you can grip, grip it really nicely with the mosquito. You push the wire with in with a tucker into the slot. You hold it and push it up or down, depending when you want. An overtie is the next lecture that was um, taught a lot initially to basically make sure that the wire um, slides better into the slot. We get better torque and tip control. So how does the how does that work? So in general, we use a power chain. Then we use a certain amount of the power chain. Like here is four modules of the power chain. We do it, we insert it under the wire. Yeah. So before you insert the wire, you go on the bracket and you you tie it over. Yeah. So you go over the wire, push the wire down, and ligate it in the gingival um, wing. Yeah, so that's why it's called an over tie. Yeah, so you oh, you go with the ligature over the wire, and this you do with a power chain. The best power chain I think you can get is from Morita, Morita power chain. And it has really good qualities um, in terms of the ligatures. This is how it looks um, at the end. Of course, when you remove it, you can go with a small ligature or probe inside and then you go down and up and it's loosened, or you can cut it, yeah? So the same ligature, like an overtie, you can do with a, with a short leg, like a mat ligature. So when we were training, um, we were told that this overtie as a, with a metal ligature, we have to use, especially when we do extraction cases, because it holds the wire down very, very well. But I question this, and I've done my master's thesis about that, and it's a very, very 
tricky ligature to do. You will see that why. Number one, you will have to create a, like a new shape under the wire. And then you do the same over tie like this and push the wire in and then you rotate it. But this is very sensitive to the user. Because some turn it not enough, some turn it too much and the wire breaks. So it's a very, very sensitive ligature. And sometimes the ligature becomes very loose. So it's not a very, very easy ligature. So I don't use this ligature anymore. And the reason why, I'll come to it later. So again, you see here, first you go under the wire, you create the U, you hook the U in, then you go with one side down and to the other side up, and then you twist it. Yeah, so this is how a ligature works as an overtie steel ligature. But again, in my opinion, it's not necessary because there are other ligatures that are more efficient. Yeah, here's step by step again. It's the same as with the power chain, but you have to do it all manually. And of course, we have the regular steel ligature. This is something that is very important. So in my portfolio of ligatures, I have an elastic module, I have an easy on O-ring, and I have these short links. And this is all I have in the power chain, of course. So these ligatures we need to train because you need to feel how many turns you need to tighten that in always. And you need to make sure that in the back here and in the front, there's no play, that the wire ligature is completely next to the bracket, that you don't lose any information. And of course, we have also um, some special um, ligatures, and they are sometimes needed to rotate a tooth. Me personally, I don't use them a lot because again, they're very complicated. So a, a lasso is being used when we want to rotate a primula because the primula, again, we have a horizontal slot, which means the wire wants to disengage. So rotation is not controlled with the wire. Sorry. So rotation is not controlled with the wire. It's really, really important. So you need an additional ligature to derotate primulas. So again, if you go on in the wire sequence and you expect the wire to correct a, a rotation of your lateral teeth, it won't happen. So a uh, lasso is basically a kind of ligature made with a power chain that goes all the way around the tooth and applies a rotational um, force. So you first of all bring it in like this, you crep it, then you tie it to the wire, and then you go into the proximal contact and all the way around the tooth, and then you hook it in. So, but you can imagine that this sometimes can slide over the buckle cusp, over the labial cusps, because it's very, very inclinated. And therefore, you can sometimes apply a bit of flow or composite on the buckle side to avoid this power chain to slip over. But again, so you've seen the, the component. I just show you again. Oh, sorry. So it's very, very important that you understand how the rotation is happening. So you tie it on the wire. You can do that in the front. You can do that in the back. Sometimes people are using it when you have any can't bond initial bracket. You can place a button like we discussed also on Tuesday. We get these customized buttons. You can place them initially, use the lasso around the front tooth and start the rotation process. And now it's very important to see. So it goes all the way around and then hooked in, you cut it and then you create a rotational moment. You can see it now. Yeah, so this is a very good part. But other options you have is as well, if you want to create a rotation, this the rotation here, you could apply a power chain from here to the front segment. Because the front, when you're in a full size wire, the rotation won't change because we have a wall, because we have a vertical insertion. So if you do a power chain to your front segment, for example, from this case, 
um, four, five, two, three, three. So lower right four to lower left three. You can apply the same rotational force on this premolar as this lasso does. And you can um, close spaces in the front at the same time. So power chain can sometimes be a good option. Again, you tie it on the wire. And then the next um, linkage which I use quite often, is a lasso. So an old lasso is something where you tie the, the, the power chain the same way as you did before on the wire. You can do that in any wire you want, but I generally do that in a 1622 night tie. The, the tooth sticks out, and then you do an O-ring over this tooth and push this tooth in. So this is something we do use a lot um, in front teeth. And you can sometimes do even a push coil to open the space up and at the same time a lasso to bring the tooth in. So this lasso, O lasso, is a very good ligature and everyone should be able to do it. So again, same concept as with the lasso. Um, you, then you roll over and then you pull force the tooth coming very close to the wire and so that you can place a bracket with the trick or freehand, however you like it, but I prefer the chick. And again, then we repeat, like with the e praise you generally get four brackets like this, two brackets, one bracket is initially bonded or button, and then you will get a second bracket in um, this box for people who haven't been there on uh, Tuesday. So it comes in a box like this with a, with a chick, and then you place the, the bracket in there and you, you position it in a nice center position. That's a very, very um, good thing. So all last, you tie it on, you go over the tooth. Again, if you have a feeling that the, the linkage show slides down or up, you can apply a bit of flowable composite on the labial surface. So now we go into the, the power chain. So this is an example. So power chains can always be used not only to close spaces, they can also be placed to help a wire to rotate a tooth. Like in this case, I've bonded a button in, the, in this rotated canine, so you can see that here. So here a button is already placed with a chick, and then I apply a power chain to help encourage the, the derotation to happen. We can see here, the Y is not even engaged because we have no slot on the, on the packet. So I use this button, initially bonded, and then I go from K9 to K9 because both K9s are mesial rotated. When I play, uh, pl place a power chain from K9 to K9, that will start the derotation of these K9s. Yeah, so in this instance, I use a power chain. Of course, we have some spaces here, so they will be closed as well. And but it helps me the initial derotation of these um, canines before, in a few weeks' time, I can place a bracket. So basically, it takes about two, three months maybe for this tooth to be derotated, and then you can place a, a center bracket. So the power chain, I think it's very clear. We used it before. Again, if you place a power chain in the lateral segment, you will make you will create a rotational moment. So, for example, if you use a power chain from premolar to premolar, the premolars they will start derotating unless you secure them either with a splint, like we're going to talk about it when we talk about the light cases with a splint, or if you use a short lid, like a metal ligature that is very tied up. So you need to make sure that the side effects this power chain will cause, that they're not applied, that you counteract the side effects. So in the lateral segment, you will create rotations. So you need to avoid that rotation. So after all these things I've learned, I've done them for years, the way I've been trained, during our master thesis, I have done um, uh, an analysis about the different types of ligatures. And a lot of these things changed the way I think a lot. Why? Because obviously I knew all the ligatures 
that were out there. And I always wanted something that is simple. So if we talk about simplicity, it is the quality or condition of being easy to understand or to do. So a lot of ligatures, some of the ligatures that were used to be taught, I haven't even shown you now because they are too complicated. So if you ever come across something called a power tie, a power tie is a really tricky ligature that the wind system uses or the incognito system uses. I don't use it all anymore because it's too difficult and too dependent on users. So I need something simple and I need something that is efficient. Efficient means that the time you have and the energy you put in is well used. So it's very important to be simple and efficient because the more difficult it gets, the less efficient we are and the more people are being frustrated doing lingual um, appliances. So that's why I'm a big believer of simplicity. Yes, lingo is not easy, but the more you do, especially if you kick off your career with light cases, like that is my aim from this um, course here, that you start doing light case because with light you can address the front segment of the teeth and it's a very powerful tool. So again, when we look at the literature, the, then the manual we've been given, we are being taught that we need to use an, an overtie, like I showed you, for, for the ligation of anterior packets, where we need a change in the tip, because remember, we have vertical and open slot, so for correcting of tipping, we need a good ligature, and we will be trained to use this overtie. So power tie is basically the same tie as an overtie, but instead of going down, you go under and up again. So it's far tighter um, to push this wire in. The problem we have with this power tie is that the power tie um, basically breaks a lot. And if you have to do six power ties um, and it breaks at a sixth one, you have to take it all out and you have to do it again. So it's not very, very efficient. So that's why I don't even talk about it and I don't recommend you to do any kind of power ties. Yeah, it's not needed. Because it's not only that you it's very difficult to apply, it also creates a lot of friction. So the more leakages you wrap around this wire, the more friction you're going to cause. So in, when I do um, do my cases, I use a bundle of different ligatures, but I basically um, reduce now my ligatures to only a few. So I use a steel tie, I use an O-ring with an easy on, I use an elastic um, over tie, and I use an elastic tipping tie, and I use a tip chain. And we're gonna talk about these. So don't be um, stressed. We these ligatures are really important to understand. So again, coming back to this elastic module. So again, 3M claimed that this one O-ring is the same force as the over tie done with the power chain. So that was what we were saying. We knew that from the graphs we've shown before. So Peter Huntley then published an article where he tried to correct the tipping of an anterior tooth by using a power chain. And how he did it is basically he went with the power chain that is under the wire again. He went to one side. So here he wants to create a mesial tip. To one side, he leaves one a part of the ligature on this, on this incisor wing, and then he goes down to the gingival hook. And that way, he creates a mesial moment to correct this tipping issue. But, of course, in total, there's only one part of the ligature applying a force on this wire to engage back into the slot. So if you, if, you, if you think about this situation, when we have a distal tipped tooth and we want to apply a mesial tip, the part where the wire is not engaged is on the distal side. So here. So here the wire is not in like you can see here as well. So this is where we need to apply a vertical force to engage this wire in. And one wing of the ligature is probably not enough. 
So um, then Adam Shulov and Irene, they said, okay, if we then use an elastic module as an overtype, like we can see here, theoretically, that should act as the power tie we were always used to do, where we double up an overtype. So that's what they introduced. And then on the e-learning platform, Dr. Sugiyama, he did something similar to Peter Hundley. He used the power chain. First, he tied it on, went over the incise, went down to chin hook to create this measle moment. But remember again, if we want to create a measle moment, means the tooth is distally tipped. And that means that the wire on the distal side is disengaged. So with this kind of force, we all even disengage the wire measly. So we lose control. So we modified this kind of scenario and then did it the other way around. So he tied it on the distal side, went down here and hooked it to the incisal wing, created the same movement, but the wire is being engaged into the slot, what we want, because here we have to play distally. So I was thinking in the masses that I could do the same because I know that an elastic module acts as an overtie done with the power chain. I thought, okay, what if we use an elastic module and do the same kind of leakage shock? So we pull it up, go to one side, and then with both arms, we go to the gingival hook. This way we have two arms pushing the wire into the slot to try to fully engage the wire again where we have to play. Yeah? So obviously it looks quite difficult, but it's not. So if you look about it step by step, again, you go under the wire like you do with the over tie. You pull your ligature up. And then you go to depending which side you want to do. In this instance, we decided to do a mesial moment. So that means the wire is disengaged distally. So we go to the distal side of the tooth, and then we go downwards and hook it into the gingival hook. This is what we are doing with the tipping tie. So it's a very, very easy um, ligature. Yes, it needs some exercising, and if we would uh, meet face to face, um, we could do some hypodon exercises. But um, at the moment, it's I have just to show you that you can take a picture of this ligature as well, if you want. That is a very important message. But with this ligature, we only can correct a tipping of a tool if there's a play between slot and wire. If you didn't check your setup and there's a tip problem in your setup, that means there's no play between wire and slot and therefore this ligature will do nothing. So it's very important again that the final setup you approve that you check all these things. And one thing I've learned and I was really impressed about was um, the tip chain. So in essence, a few years back on the Lingo Society meeting, um, Dr. Yerose introduced this kind of tip chain. Tip chain means there's a kind of a seesaw of the power chain. So you go from top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And this way we create a measle moment. And he introduced it when he was talking about extraction cases, because when you do a mass rejection, because you have a vertical slot, you will create a distal tip of the laterals and the canine. So you need a good ligature on these. And when you apply this mesial moment while you close it, this counteracts the distal tipping of the lateral and the canines. So that was the philosophy behind it. So basically use it in our mass rejection to counteract the, the side effect of our mass rejection, which is distal tipping of lateral and canines. So how does it work? Again, you go from the back. So one thing that is not good here on this type of is there's no um, ligature. So this is just a power chain. So in the clinical case, you should have here a metal ligature on it and here as well to avoid any rotation happening here. But you go from the lateral segment to the within one element to the gingival hook, like you can see here. So here's one element 
to Chinook, that pulls this Chinook hook distally. And then with the next module, like with this one, you go to the incisal wing. So you see that here. So now we are here with one module to the gingival. We go next module to the incisal. And from here, like you see, so down again to the next um, gingival hook. Yeah. So now we have started the first movement. So we go from here, that pulls it back. This will pull it forward. This will pull it back. And like this, we create this mesial moment. And we do that in the whole front segment. Yeah. We call that a tip chain. And at the end, basically, it looks like this. So we go from lateral segment, short leg here, one ligature to a gingival hook, next ligature from the incisor to gingival, next ligature, incisor, gingival, then next ligature, incisor, incisor, because here we need to change the tipping. Then we go down to gingival, incisor, gingival, incisor, gingival in one element to the premolar and back. So it seems to be quite complicated. You will have to train that a bit. So that is again where we should do some type of exercises because you need to understand how this is working. Because if you understand it, you can use it for your um, benefit. Why? Because when we do uh, closed spaces, for example, imagine here that we have a space. So what's happening quite commonly if it's with aligners or with brackets, that these tip, when we have a space here, they tip inwards, measly. So we create a problem. So if we have here the tip chain that pulls the crown, the, the incisor edge backwards and the gingival hook measly, we will create this the moment here, and here, you can see here how it's applied. We create a distal moment, and then we close the space that will counteract the mesial tip. So we do bodily movement. And this is very, very important to understand. So by pulling the gingival hooks together and the uh, incisor wings backwards, we counteract the tipping we will generate. So to close spaces in the anterior, this is a very, very powerful ligature. So what have I done? So in my master thesis in Switzerland, I've basically um, compared um, the different ligatures in their force. When we pull on an 1825 steel wire, we pull the wire out until the ligature breaks, and then we measure the force. And out of the distance um, of the slot and the force, we can um, calculate a moment. And then we measure the moment, and we compared the, the T-bar brackets of incognito. Like again, we have the same T-bar bracket in E-brace with an enlarged slot. So I recommend you to use them. So we measured the force and then we, we had the diagram which, is, which we can see and where the moment is applied. So this is the so-called the T-bar bracket from E-brace. It's the same principle like with um, the incognito. We have an enlarged slot in the ins in the in the in the self ligating slot and in the in the main slot, so it's very very good, a better control of tipping. So something I really recommend you to use. So when we've done this thing, it's when we have a graph where we um, measure an angle, and depending how much we pull the the y out of the slot, we created a moment, and then we have a graph. And in the graph, you can see that here, this is where the ligature just breaks. So we pull, we pull, we pull until the ligature breaks, and then we compare the, the graph, and we get the table. And with the table, there are all the different forces. So what do we do with it? So here on the left-hand side, you can see we have here normal brackets, um, like 10 normal brackets, and we have 10 tip bar brackets, and we have tried every ligature, n times with each bracket and different forces. So then we create an average value and the standard deviation, like in any study. And now it's, of course, very important to compare the ligatures we are used to do in our system. 
So we have the elastic module. Remember, 3M said that would replace an overtie done with the power chain, like for example, Morita power chain. And if we look at it, Morita overtie with the power chain, so to say, has 9.2 and the elastic module has 11.55. First of all, it's far more forces with an elastic module like 11.55, 9.2, but also the standard deviation is 2.1 and 0.9. So also the, 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 uh, the overtie with the power chain is more difficult. So if you look at elastic overtie, we said um, elastic overtie should then add because like a power tie, like the really difficult ligature with the power chain. And if you look at it, it's very similar, 13.8 and 40.2. So there's no statistically difference. But again, look at the standard deviation, five to one. So this is far easier to do the elastic over tie compared to the power tie. So again, simplicity. And then we look at the ligature. We talked about the elastic tipping tie I've done. We have a moment of 17.55 and with the tip bar, basically double. So we see here that this tip up with a large slot helps us, makes it the moment double. So therefore, when we have tip problems, an enlarged slot will bring us more efficiency. That's why it's really important to order it. So compared to the ligatures we were um, shown from Huntley and Sugiyama, they are not as efficient. We are in the area of five to seven, and here we are at 17. So it's a huge, huge difference. So now, why do I not do the over ties in steel anymore for mass rejection? Is this is the reason? So, if you look at a steel wire O10 and a steel over tie, with a steel over tie, I have far less moment than with a, a steel tie. So, I create more force on a, with a steel tie than I can do with a steel over tie, and the standard deviation is double. So it's double as difficult a steel over tie than it is a steel tie. And that is very important to understand. So we should make things more difficult than they already are. And basically here, what I've calculated, the average um, improvement of using an increased slot size is 34%. So um, we should definitely um, think about using this enlarged slot in the interior if initial situation is like we have a lot of tipping. So tipping needs a wide slot, either horizontal insertion like we talked initially, or a wider slot like a so-called tip bar. Yeah. So what have I done? I basically then took these values and did a so-called t-test to compare if there's a statistically a difference in um, these different ligatures. And Everyone in green, they show a statistic difference. So the elastic basically is far better than over tie. Elastic module, like from the blue one, is the same as the Ezion. So that's why I use the Ezion and not the elastic, because they're also more expensive. An elastic over tie is better than a Morita, like a power chain over tie. The elastic over tie is the same as the power tie. That's why I don't do power ties anymore. The elastic tipping tie is far better than uh, the Sugiyama tipping tie. And a steel tie, an O8, is better than O10. So that is very, very important. So I use an O9 nowadays for my, my ligatures, or sometimes O8 in the front. They are very thin, so they break easier. So between O8 and O9, I would use for the steel ligatures. So what can we take home? What messages we have about these ligatures? Of course, the elastic module replaces the overtie. Yeah? So, and the elastic overtie, the blue one as an overtie, replaces the power tie. And the tipping tie is the best ligature to correct tipping. A steel tie is more efficient or effective and easier than a steel over tie. The thickness of the steel ligature matters. So don't be too thick. 
don't be too thin. So O9 leakages are fine. And the thicker the leakage, the more complicated it gets and the highest the standard deviation. So we need to be careful and about that. And the tip bar is in basically recommended when we have tipping problems, but it makes it diffi more difficult to ligate. So we have to consider if we want it or not, but if we have a tip problem, I would definitely say yes, go for it. So the solutions for your practice is the following. When a wire is passively in your slot, which means it doesn't want to come out, you can use the easy on O-rings. If there's an active force, don't use it. So also when we talk about later, about clinic case, the reason why I've done different ligatures is for this reason. When there's an active force, I need to think about it. So an, an, an overtie, you can use either at the first wire or from the 1622 night tie wire um, to engage the wire fully to express rotation and torque. So this is something you can do. You will see that in the in the cases I show you as well. So this is the elastic overtie you can do initially um, or in a 1622 latest. Then you can correct the tipping. The tipping tie you should always do when you have a tip problem on a semi stiff or stiff wire, and you know that the setup you approved is correct. If the setup your proof is wrong as well. There is a tipping problem. You need to order a correction wire to compensate this tipping. Yeah, the steel ligature are always used when there's active force on the wire and it wants to disengage. So when you want to fully control the wire is in the slot. So whenever a wire disengages or will disengage because you apply a power chain on it, you should use the steel ligature. Yeah, and of course, when we want to reduce friction, um, we should use a steel ligature. Yeah, tipping chain, like I said, is in extraction cases um, or when you close spaces, or to encourage um, tip to happen while you close spaces. Yeah, um, the tip chain initially, but that is more like when we do about full case and extraction cases. Instead of you applying a mesial uh, force or a 70 degree mesial tip um, in the wire like they recommend, but they don't want to talk too much about it today because it's injection cases, um, you could also think about using a 70 degree mesial tip in a setup. But again, with e -brace, you have different options of changing the tip already um, in the bracket, so which is very, very nice. So, combination of ligatures like here where we want to apply a case so you can see here I have not only done this tipping tie here to create a disc the tip I also pulled backwards with the power chain so I do two things at the same time to get the movement going and this is the true power of um, the ligatures and the fixed appliance compared to aligners aligners really struggle with this angulation control so here Again, I pull on these teeth, therefore I use a short lick to make sure that this is not disengaging. So whenever you think you pull on a tooth and it will disengage, you should secure it. Also, when you use elastics, you should use um, short licks on the teeth where you applied elastic from. Now you see here that was a class three case where I did a class three last from the button and the buckle to lingual side and the canine and on this canine we have uh, a short ligature here yeah, it's then very easy to engage it's also very easy to clean and then of course uh, to finish a case sometimes you need these tent elastics here in the front just to close the spike down but you stay in the ligature yeah sometimes um, the bite can open initially because when you do leveling and aligning the bite in the front opens up and then you can use early elastics here in the front, like you can see here, and also there, you need to use these short legs. So again, here in this case, for example, I used the elastic overties, but here was a lot of power on this canine. 
So this elastic module was when it when it doesn't come for a long period of time, the, the ligature loses the, the flexibility and it it breaks. It becomes really fragile. It breaks and then it disengages. And then when it disengages, this will be pushed labially. So you can you lose information. So when you use an elastic over tie as well, and you have a lot of power on it, it's sometimes wise to secure even the elastic over tie with the short ligature. So elastic over tie pushes it in and the short ligature just protects the wire from disengaging. So it's very, very important to think about that. What could happen in the next two, three, four, five, six weeks, whenever you decide to see them? Me personally, I see patients every three to four weeks. So you need to check and change the ligatures. So what should, should that picture show you? Is number one, this is after three weeks how the ligatures look. So they're really distorted. So if you, if you want to be efficient, especially in closing spaces, you should change your elastic modules in a, in a very frequent manner. So every two weeks, I would recommend you to change it, to apply a new force on these um, teeth because you just lose too much time. Because we know that evidence shows that in, when you use these uh, kind of O-rings or power chains, that the majority of force level drops in the, in the first 24 hours. So that is crucial to understand. So of course, if you want to avoid any of these ligation um, problems, you could think about ordering or even e-praise with a, with a um, passive self-ligating clip because then you don't have a ligature. You have a clip that you can open close, similar to the Damon um, Q mechanism. And um, it's, I haven't tried it yet, but um, it's something I will definitely try. But again, um, you have to always consider the following when you use um, mechanisms like this. The more mechanics are on a bracket, the wider the bracket will get. And when you have a very short distance between brackets, especially in the lower front, this could be a problem. So, and also the staining can be a problem. So that's why me personally, I avoided using it so far. I've done Alia system before, which is self-ligating. And this was one of the main problems, the clip initially, and then when you close it, it breaks and you have rebounds. So we have to be very, very careful, just jumping to a conclusion that this is a better system. But of course, when you can apply it, um, it basically reduces the risk of ligation mistakes. But um, I like ligating because I do no ligation and I have a bit more flexibility in it. Because here, if the wire didn't work in full, you will not be able to close the clip and you still need a ligature to get it right. So we have to consider, but that could be a solution. And again, what I like about this system is you will have the option. You don't need to go to somebody else to order a different packet. You have the, all the different options. You can have a vertical insertion from horizontal insertion. You can have passive self-ligating. It is completely your choice. It's a matter of um, how confident you are and about the price because the price for these packets is probably about um, 250 pounds more for a full case compared to the basically the vertical insertion horizontal insertion so these are things we have definitely to consider because manufacturing is just so much more advanced if you do self-ligating also maybe you should maybe go more into a straight wire approach and order straight wire um, instead of this fully customized wire. So this was basically the main um, thing today, ligatures, because it's very, very important to understand ligatures. So if there are no questions, I would go now to um, the ordering. So how can we order this device? So basically, one of the good things about ePraise is um, that the software you order it with is browser-based. So you'll be able to use a Macintosh or uh, a normal Windows computer. 
So again, we talked yesterday on Tuesday about impressions. So if you have impressions, I would recommend you to scan them in and send, uh, send the SCL data, or ideally, of course, you use um, the scanner. <clears throat> so this is the site you're gonna go on. Yeah, basically www.smileebrace.com. <clears throat> And um, here at the bottom, when you're a new customer, you can register now. So at the end of today's course, um, I will have your names and I will give these names to the company and they will write a certificate and a customer number and then you should be able to register um, this to this page. And um, then you have your login details and your password and then you log in and then you come to the platform of um, ePraise. So again, ePraise, we have um, similar to the ClinCheck software, it's very, very similar. We have a 3D, 3D setup overlay op opportunity. We can basically order everything through there and we can communicate with the lab in that um, browser-based software. This is the, the page you will land on. So, and then you have here different um, thing. On the left-hand side, you see where your cases are. Temporary case, they receive the case, they review the case, they have a setup process, you need to set up a proof, then the bracket design process, and then the bracket design approval. That is one of the difference, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. So here, you go then on add a case, or here you can contact them directly. Yeah, so add a case and contact us is very important. So when you add a case, you can um, then choose the customized lingo packet. Interestingly, that they are at the beginning of this development, they will also in the future use clear liners like a lot of companies. So, but I see a true benefit in this. We have one software and you can use either lingo or liners. Why is that powerful? Because sometimes you want to do the major crowding with a lingo system and finish off with a few aligners. So you could do that with this system. But at the beginning of it, um, so I don't know any more details, but I haven't done any aligners yet with this um, system, but then the development of the software for English customers with clear aligners. In, uh, in China, they're using it already but here not yet. But for now we talk about this lingo system, but combining systems sometimes can be very beneficial. So then when you clicked on add a new case, of course you, you have here a workflow. So the basic information, then you upload photographs, then you write your treatment plan, and then you upload your scans or any additional information. So you tell them basically your name, male, female, age, occupation is not very important, and your clinic and then you save it. So when you've done it, you can also use a different clinic. When you're, you work a different clinic, you just apply a different shipping address here. So if you work in different clinics. So then that is very, very good is like in the, some systems, photos are not um, needed or not required in this system. They are required, but of course, if you don't have them, it's not a problem, just tell them you don't have them they still will go ahead, especially if you do just the light case. But here you have the option of basically uploading all the pictures you want, like frontal photograph, smile, 45 degrees and profile. Then you upload the upper, the lower front, so the standard clinical pictures, you upload, you click on it, and then it comes to an, an opening browser and then you um, take your, your photo and upload it. Yeah, and x-rays, of course. So you, you, you basically so submit everything you want and to the case, and then you have it on your file, and you press save again. So the next step is then the treatment plan. And this is where um, it becomes a bit more tricky. So what initially, is you describe what the primary goal was, of your, or what's your, the primary um, chief concern of your patient. So this is sometimes very important when you, when you um, review a setup to, to remember 
um, what was the chief concern of the patient. So you'll be able to write that here. So then, of course, the next thing you have to tell them um, what you plan to do. Do you do both arches, single arches, or something specifically? And is the dentition normal, abnormal? Do you do non-extraction or extraction, or do you extract teeth? So you have the different options. So if you choose this kind of sequence, nothing will happen. If you choose abnormal dentition, then you automatically come to a different folder. Also here, we at the end of something you've done, here you can save it as a template, and then you could select the template. So something that occurs on a frequent basis, you can save as template. If you wanted to save some time, me personally, I like to think about individually about everything in each case, because otherwise I'm not thinking at all and I miss things. So again, if you then choose um, the option of there's something not right, not the dentition is not normal, then there comes a pop-up field, and then you will have to, to tell them what is abnormal. If teeth are missing, if we have implants, so you can click on these teeth here and tell them what is not normal, so that they do know in their setup. Yeah. So if you have basically a persistent uh, a baby teeth, you see the tooth on four or five, doesn't matter what it is. Also, if you choose the option that you do do an extraction case, you can apply the extraction here, and you can also here say that there's a deceased tooth on four or five. So whatever information you want to give them, and the more information you give them, the better will be your setup. Also, in light cases, like for example, Incognito won't allow you to do extraction cases in a light. Um, E-Brace does allow you that. But obviously, um, I would always start slowly, slowly before I go into extraction cases with um, um, Lingua. The next part of the treatment planning is the setup requirements. So of course, you need to tell them if you want to set up in both arches or only one arch and what kind of overjet overbite you would like and the canine and molar relationship at the end of your treatment. So all any special requirements. So this very structured of your achievements you want to acquire. So if you have an extraction case, of course, your molars will be in class two. So you have to tell them what you want to achieve at the end. The next part is what kind of anchorage you want to choose. Do you choose maximum anchorage, moderate anchorage, or minimum anchorage? Yeah, here, this is something which we have to be careful of. The more expansion we do in the intercanine distance, the more relapse we have. So we know that, that nowadays we tend to do more non-extraction, but we recommend long life retention. So sometimes it's maybe better to extract than not to extract and just to overexpand because they relapse. But here you have the option to either maintain the art shape or you do expansion on these and these things. You can describe it. Then, of course, we can say um, stripping. So stripping, I would be always very careful. You can either say when the bulging discrepancy is there or specific teeth when you know already, but sometimes it's very wise to do stripping, not at the beginning. So to tell them, don't do any stripping, then you will be given a setup. And within the setup, then you see if there are any plaque triangles, and then considering your setup you get, you will probably know better where you should apply some stripping. And then in the communication system, in contact us, you can even tell them, now I want stripping and set the specific teeth. But sometimes it's better to delay the stripping. And then you have, like I said before, you have options of choosing the bracket setting. So what information is in the bracket? For like case, it's not as important. It's more for full cases where you have the options of adding some torque on these teeth to compensate um, when, when you do a mass rejection, the distal movement, that they flare backwards. Yeah. So in light cases, it's nothing you have to do really. It's more for full cases. But you have here options of choosing different torque for different cases or any kind of special design. Also, you can see here, you could choose any extra tip. Um, um, um. 
you can choose any extra tip. Like I said before, in extraction, maybe choose some extra seven degrees knees or tip on the lateral canine. So you have these options here in the software already, and the other softwares don't have this option. So you have a lot of flexibility in the planning. So the better you plan, the better you will get the results. Again, something we talked about briefly on Tuesday is here, but in the bracket hub, you have different um, options of um, the brackets. So you can have the nickel chrome bracket with vertical insertion, you have cobalt chrome bracket, you have even a gold bracket, and you have this, the passive self ligatic bracket here, E lock. So you have different opportunities, or you can have horizontal insertion. You can describe basically any shape you want in this option. You just have to tell them what you want. They have everything, biplanes, double tube, double wing, um, tubes, um, whatever you want, just write to them what you want, and they will give it to you. So also, if you need a customized TPA, they will manufacture it for you. That is the beauty about here, this software and this company. They do what you like them to do, and there's no extra charge to it. They charge one fee, and if they give you two brackets, then it's fine. So it's, it's a very nice way of communicating. So then, of course, we come to the wire selection. And wire selection is, I think, a question already that was asked on Tuesday. So me, personally, I like when you have severe crowding cases, I like to start in an O12 night tie, then I go to an O16 night tie, 1622, 1825, and then I either finish in a 1725 team A or in an 1825 team A. Sometimes O, O16 team A is needed when you do some finishing bends, but that's more detailing, that's too much for today. So O12, O16, 1622, 1825, 1725 or 1825 when I need to fill this slot completely. When we do um, class two elastics or anything like this, but again, it's more for full cases or extraction cases, I would always choose a steel wire. Yeah, so 1725 steel wire is very good. When you do um, class two elastic in 1825, NITA is also enough. Yeah. Also remember that you have the option of straight wire technique. So you have, uh, if you have a case with a lot of gaps, it might be the best thing for you to order straight wire technique in this system to have more sliding mechanics. So steel wire, I generally only use um, when I want expansion, like cross by correction, when I need sliding mechanics, yeah, or helps devices or forces device, things like this then you can use uh, stainless steel wire. But it's not normally in a standard case, especially not in a light case, a steel wire is not needed. In a light case, it's 012, 016, 18, 1622, 1825, and then 1725. Sometimes you can even do an 016 team A, like you can see here in the bottom. Because on O6 team A, it's very easy to do um, correction bends. Yeah, so in outs with a tackle. And of course, you can write at the end of the treatment plan, you can write the whole patient journey, the whole, if you the biomechanics you want to use, if you want to use mini screws to distalize, you can basically write to them whatever you like them to do. If you should align gingival margins, if you should pork the front teeth a bit more, and then that's what they're going to read, and that's how they do their setup. And finally, last, when you then order a case, you have to save it, and then you upload your um, STL data. So you have the all digital scan, so you have to upload the upper, you upload the lower, and uh, the right. You have these options here. If you have chosen to send an um, silicon impression, you can do that. Just give them the reference number that they can track it. But again, I would recommend you to save a lot of time and to avoid any problems with customs is to send it to your local lab. They create an STL data with your PVS impression and then you upload 
the SCL data here on this system is you click the upload button, then you basically go to your um, scan to your SCL data wherever you saved it, and then you upload it. And then you can upload any other files you think are important for this case, and then at the end, you submit the case. And then it's a in reviewing process. So in a case like this, it's very easy. So we have here a bit of crowding and here severe crowding. So this is something where I, me personally, I would choose an O12 night tie wire. Yeah, initially, then O16, 1622, 1825, and then 1725 Team A. So that is a classic light, light case where we can do upper and lower front light. Yeah, so here's the wire sequence I will choose in this instance. Yeah, because if, for example, you get five wires for free, if you choose to have a steel wire, then as a first wire, I wouldn't order an old 12 wire. I would use an old 12 wire from any other system, Buckley, and apply it because it won't have any effect on the arch shape. So if you want to save a wire, the first wire, old 12, you can save and you can use any other. O12 NITA wire from any other systems. So this was about how do you order it. So next one is that we need to talk about um, what do we do with the setup. So why have I done something about setup review? So in my career, when I had to do finishing um, things or when problems occurred, I always looked at my own cases to see why did this problem occur in the first place. And we know, we talked about it on Tuesday, that with a lingual appliance, we have a system that is very accurate. We have a very quick system. And when you plan properly, that's what you get when you know what to do. So clinical accuracy, we talked about that. We talked about the, the study of Dr. Talheim where she compared the intercanine distance and it's very accurate. Um, the inter intercanine distance is what you plan, is what you get. Dan Crower has done the same thing with superimposing of the, of the before and after and figured out that it, it fits. Um, the main discrepancies, as we talked about as well on Tuesday, is especially in the first molar region, we have discrepancies of plus minus one and about four um, degree of rotation. So we've talked about that. So again, when we know the slot dimensions, we know um, what the problem is of the case, we can be very efficient and we can use this in social media. On the first day, we talked about the danger of social media, but social media can be also very powerful. So the case where we do a lingual light, like in this case, where we align front teeth very quickly, is very powerful social media and it will give you a lot of new customers. And because light braces is very efficient and very cheap, this is your practice builder. So whenever you think there could be a problem with the liners or it takes a bit longer, then please consider a light version because the power you get in social media is huge. And the people normally you attract through social media don't have the money to pay for full case. So that's what you have to consider. So well, again, coming back to how I learned is basically I looked at cases of mine, like for example, the setup I approved I didn't see a few things that are not good. So I didn't see, when I looked at my finished cases, that here's a torque discrepancy between lower left one and lower right one. And I didn't see that in the setup, it's exactly like that. So it was basically, I didn't approve the setup nicely. And when you look at the canine, the in-out, we have the same in-out on our setup that I approved. So that's very dangerous. So here, that was a case, basically, I was referred to from a colleague. She was unhappy with the progression of her treatment. We have obviously here a big problem of torque and an open bite. So
So we have a crossbite situation. So I basically continued her treatment. And then at the end, we were at this situation. By here, this situation, we can obviously correct with the elastic here as a tent to bring this um, torque expression from the premolar down because maybe I choose the wrong ligatures on the premolar and I didn't get full torque expression. On the left hand side, however, um, there was the bite was a problem. And if you look at the situation of the setup, then you obviously there's no wonder that there was a bite problem because the setup was also not right. So we have vertical problems here. So we don't prove the setup rightly, we won't achieve the result. So it's very important to check the setup you get because this is what you will achieve at the end if you do the right thing. So luckily we could finish her to an acceptable result. It wasn't perfect, but it was acceptable. But that was an external case. This was a very nice case where the patient complaint was literally just the space. We know that it's very easy to treat, and I treated it in a few days. But because I was prepping about um, that what we plan is what you get, and I showed him the setup, how it's going to look at the end, and he said, oh, great. He noticed that there's a small gap between upper and lower teeth. And if we look at the setup, it was the same thing. So this was a case, you wouldn't believe it, but he tried to sue me because of this problem. Of course, the only thing you have to do here is to use vertical elastics, the bite will close down and the problem is solved. So sometimes you have to be really careful with these easy cases because sometimes they're not as easy as you think they are. Another very interesting case is um, this young lady. She looked really bad to start off with and she complained in this situation um, um, about something. So uh, I think there's a quite good result, but the patient noticed that the rotation of the upper right lateral to the upper left lateral is different. So this is a very small difference. And um, when you look at the setup, um, we, I accept it, it's the same thing. So actually I got whatever I wanted to achieve. So I had to customize my final wire because it wasn't what the patient wanted. So if you look, like this was a case where basically she had canine extraction before. We had here severe crowding of the primula, here severe crowding of the canine. So I extracted the last canine. So here, there are no canines. And for this, I think we achieved a very, very good result. So if we do a setup, of course, we can also plan that chips like here that would require bonding to avoid bonding. We can extrude this tooth slightly and later on then reduce it. So this is very powerful um, when we think about it. So this is how it will look after alignment. Of course, we tell the patient that that's just how it will look. And then we take a soft flex disc or a fine diamond and we reduce this incisal edge to get to this situation. And the patient will be very, very happy. And, and that is something where you can create another wow in your treatment and patients appreciate this kind of thing. What I wanted to point out here in this slide is that with the talk of upper canines, we have to be very, very careful because patients notice it. So if there's a discrepancies of shape of the canines, or of the different talks, there's something we have to look into and advise the patient accordingly. Because for some reason, they always point that out that one tooth is sticking out more than the other. So sometimes it's the shape and sometimes it's um, the, the position of the teeth. But we could finish it nicely. So again, we've ordered our case. So we have this case management software and we get a setup back. But no setup is good if we don't check it. And from my times with 3M, I know that 70% of the setups, they are accepted straight away. And when you look at some of the simulations, is in, in the, for example, in the 3M software, the rules, they were simulated. So they, they seem to be very straight, but in reality, it is that they weren't straight. 
because we didn't um, bring in a CBCT data. So that was a problem. This case wasn't a problem because we placed some veneers. That's why in ePraise you can submit CBCT data as well with root positioning, same as with SureSmile, for example. Um, you will be able to submit CBCT data with it. And that is a very powerful tool if you want to have accurate treatment planning. This is an option. So then, of course, you compare the treatment plan you've written with the setup you have from the company. So here, when you look at this slide as well, in the software itself, when you have a setup review, you have the options like in the clean check or front review, V review, left view, right view, up view, or top view, and you can do the malocclusion you can put in on the setup, or you can overlay the two things. So, you have all different options how to look at your setup. You can look at uh, the basically this final and the uh, malocclusion. You just have to tick um, the different radio button here, or you leave them both on, then you have a super important closure. So, you have to check if the treatment plan in general that you wanted is fulfilled the art shape, the leveling of the interior, the crown torques. So, whatever you wanted to achieve in your case, you need to check that first. It's very, very important to basically review your overall treatment plan. And if there's any, any problems, then you can come back to it. So you can also hear in, when you have the cases done, in case details, you can always review the cases or you can even communicate with your lab. So in the same, in the main page, you can go on case edit, then you go review the case and make changes or you can do online communication with them. Yeah, and when you do online communication, um, that looks like this, where you can send directly to your lab technician a message. Sometimes it's also live, but obviously you have to consider um, the time difference. But that is how you can communicate any changes if you want them. So it's very important that you get the setup you want. Again, we talked about uh, IPR. There's a, a, obviously IPR is being mentioned when you have the setup on the teeth and where you want to apply the IPR. I would delay it as much as possible that in situations like this, where we have a black triangle, that we can maybe apply some specific IPR in these areas. Yeah, so also important is that sometimes the technician themselves write you a message. So every time there's any kind of communication, you will get an email with something that something's going on. So you log into your um, software and then you check what the problem is. If it's over chat with questions, so they will warn you about certain things that might be a problem in your setup. Again, you have the arch, arch form, you have the overlay function here where you do upper and lower um, with malocclusion and um, final setup together. So you have different color coding. The purple is basically malocclusion and the brownish color is the final. So you can check it what you would like to achieve and if it's correct. Then of course you check the smile arch, how it fits, what you need to extrude or inshoot. You have to achieve good um, result. So then we come to the micro modification. So that was just overall macro modification we've done so far if in general they, they did the good treatment plan according to how we wanted to do it. Now we go a bit more in detail where we check the marginal ridges of the premolars, canines, front teeth, if the oval arch shape is good. And then we come to something that um, I mentioned before. Because we have a lingual brace, we have a full-size wire and a good accurate slot, we have full torque full torque control. So this is why we need to check the torque. And how do we do that? We look at the occlusal surface, then we tip the, malo, the, the, the final setup a bit upwards to see the labial surfaces here and to assess if there's a discrepancy in what you see in the labial surface because this is the torque. So if you see discrepancies in the torque of these front teeth, you will address it. And then you can rotate 
to the side and rotate the tooth along the, the y axis. And you see then in out problems between your front teeth. And this is what patients will tell you as well. When you go with the finger or the tongue along their labial surfaces, these in out, in torque, they will be able to feel. So this is very, very important to see in the setup and to review it. And lastly, of course, you have your OPG, you check your angulation um, of the teeth and the root positioning. Yeah, so margin and riches in canine rotations that the mistakes like I've shown you at the beginning don't happen. So the rotation should be fully correct and very good contact points. Yeah, margin riches, rotations, and torque. So it's something very simple. And if you've done it a few times, you check it in a few minutes, basically. And at the end, you do a frontal check if we have vertical discrepancies or if we need some incisal recontouring, or for example here, we could do some additional IPR because we have to expect some black triangles. So these things you can see and these things you can communicate. But again, what I said to you on Tuesday as well is when you have finally accepted it, when you order your cases, please tell them you want a final setup and your malocclusion model, model, model with it. So they send it in the box because with this, you can show your patients live how it's going to look and they understand the problem. Computer is, is good, but something handleable in your hands is even better. And very powerful. Every time you do treat the case, you get it out and you see where do you want to be, what you want to achieve, what did you approve. So this is something really, really important to consider. So all of these before and after models from the company, they send it with it. And the same then we do in the upper arch as well. We look at the overall alignment, the rotations of the premolars. We look at the torque, and torque in the upper is, especially in the canine area, very, very important that there's symmetry. Yeah, so we do the same thing with occlusal view. We tip it slightly, and then we rotate around and see if there's any in-out problems. If the shape of canines or any other thing is different, that is why we have a bit of a belly or a bit of an in-out problem, then please, please talk to your patient about that and warn them that we might need some bonding or veneer or polishing on these teeth to get symmetry. Like here in this case, we can see here the shape here is different to here. So we have a bit of more belly, so this patient will feel it eventually. So to avoid any conflicts or that patients come to you and say, I don't like it, please correct it. Um, to avoid that, please, please um, consider these shape problems. Again, mesial distal angulation, we check that with the x-ray. Marginal ridges, rotations, again, same thing. So the better we review the setup, the better our outcome will be. And we don't need any refinements. And that's the main point. So again, here, talk of upper canines is very important because people look at it. So this is a case where they would require, in my idea, some IPR here, bonding for symmetry purposes. So now this bonding is booming. So we have to be aware of this. And finally, one of the main things why we are so good in it, what we do is because we don't cover occlusive surfaces we can achieve a good occlusion and bite if we plan the occlusion bite accordingly. So we need to consider if there's any prosthodontic work to be done later, bonding, veneers, onlays, what kind of distance they want between the teeth, if they want some overjet here, if they want some spacing between the teeth to place some non-preparation veneers. Anything like this should be talked about with your um, dentist you work with. So here we, we plan some spaces between the laterals. Here we plan to open some space for an implant. So interdisciplinary working with a customized device like this is very, very good and very, very quick. Again, compared to aligners. So again, what you plan is what you get. This was an implant, implant case. Here, this was a veneer case. So whatever you plan, you can achieve. And here, we obviously, we talked about it as well briefly. When we have this wear 
on these front teeth. Of course, one option is to um, talk with them about bonding and veneers. Another option, if they, if they don't show gum when they're smiling, is to extrude these teeth and basically then shave inside the contact. And maybe if you want to, you can do some gum recontouring with laser at the end. Yeah, but here definitely we need some repair. So these are ways to work very nicely together with your dentist, or if you're dentist yourself, then you, these are things which are, which are very nice to do and very, very efficient. Canine guidance, of course. And at the end, of course, you then approve the setup and you're done. But the main difference is in this system, you not only approve the setup, you will be also uh, able to approve the bracket design. So after you approve the setup, they will produce the brackets and the bracket design, you will have to prove again. So this is where you can change the shape and design of the brackets. And this is one of the main differences in this system as well, because in other systems, you won't have any influence in the bracket design. So you can't change it anymore after you've ordered it. So we've done now a set of reviews. So now basically we come to the last part is when we talk literally about the light cases and how powerful they can be. And in the cases we're gonna talk about now is for me, it's very important for you to understand the mistakes that were happening in these cases because we talked about linkages, we talked about wires, we talked about all things of things, but the most important thing is you learn out of your own mistakes if you face a problem. So of course, we, we talked about it on Tuesday, we have a lot of competitors, we have Invisalign, SmileDirect, Instagram, and, but we have also other lingual companies. It's not like um, there's only one company, there are plenty of other companies out there with main benefits. But the reason why e I find quite interesting is because there's the combination of all of these systems. So depending on which system you like, for which case, you could order it. And that is quite powerful. In general, what I recommend you to do as a maybe a kind of um, an idea is if you want to do lingo, all of my lingo cases I've seen a lot of patients come into the office, of course, and want Invisalign. But because I know that, you can use this for your own benefit and you can offer, for example, Invisalign open days. You get them in the chair and if you find that torque or rotation of canines or laterals, really tricky movements or rotations of round teeth, and you know with Invisalign you will struggle, please, please make them aware that lingual light cases are available and it's a very powerful tool so you can use in this line for your open days your scanner your simulation etc but then please offer them also alternatives to aligners because lingual is a very very good alternative if you do it properly so this is a key message for you to please consider and today we want to talk about this light case so light cases is basically we want to address the social six case, so the front teeth only. And I always choose a lingual case with a splint on four to five to increase anchorage to avoid any side effects in the bite, because I don't want any um, bite problems. Yeah, we talked about the efficiency, we talked about the speed, we can use it for light cases. And if you do that, you create a lot of positive vibes. So this case I've showed you before, she was an open bite with a cross bite, but her budget didn't allow a full case and um, she got married. So she only wanted her front teeth to be aligned and we did that. And I think we did that nicely with a light case. So yes, from an orthodontic point of view, it's not ideal, but it's what the patient wanted, what the patient could afford and what the patient had the time to do. So we have to really consider the wishes of our patients when we do cases like this. So we literally just aligned the upper front teeth. We said to her, she has to accept the cross bite. She might come back later to address it. I, I don't know, but she was very 
aware that only front teeth are being aligned. And why give that away? It's a very simple device. Two and a half months, it's sorted. It's very, very easy. Also, this next case was a famous author of business books. So we treated him for a few months. He gave me a book and he said, thank you so much, Miracle Worker. So again, this is a businessman um, who is influential in their own business world. So this, this is powerful messages on um, social media. So with a light case, you can do that. This is the case. So again, he, you couldn't see that he was a class three here. And all he cared about was the upper front teeth. He never smiled in his shootings and televisions. He went on the full class three skeletal bite. We only literally addressed the upper front teeth. The bite wasn't changed and the patient was happy. Like I said to you before in the setup review, so this we talked about today in the setup review, but we also have the option of the bracket and wire review where basically we can change to straight wire technique or a different horizontal insertion, whatever we choose. So we have the setup, we have the CBC teeth data, and we have now brackets on the, set, on the final setup. And this is where the difference is. You can see the, the design of the brackets on the teeth. So therefore, you can not only see the brackets in your final situation, we can also see your brackets, how they look like in the malocclusion. So people who've done lingual already before, they know that sometimes after bond up, you bite on certain brackets. So when you have an option like this, you could see where would be pre-contact and therefore you can change the design like we talked on Tuesday, where we can reduce inside the wings to avoid any pre-contacts. So this is very, very important important that we have this option of malocclusion because we have sometimes side effects caused by biting and this is what I was just talking about. We have the malocclusion with the brackets. You can see they bite on it and when they bite on it, we can reduce this inside the wing and change the design. Without this option, you would never be able to see that. Of course, we change it. We can choose a long slot. We can change the self-ligating slot. So we talked about all these things. When we talk about the, the passive self-ligating, horizontal insertion. So at this stage where you design, you approve your packet design, you can change anything you want because you might have forgotten it. Think about the additional buttons they send to you for the initial alignment. Think about the byte planes you might need because of the byte. Yeah. Consider the wire sequence if you want straight wire, customized wires or mushrooms wire, whatever you like, you have to tell them. And this is the time where you tell them. So if we look at now the cases like with incognito, we had this um, splint and this splint um, is very fragile. It's very thin because they said that um, it needs a bit of flexibility, but I faced quite a few problems where I had debonds of these splints. That's why I prefer when you do e brace they are more rigid. And they, I had no debonds so far. But just by doing light cases doesn't mean that, that nothing can happen. So here in this case, the only problem was the angulation and the space closure of the tooth. Again, it would be a very tricky case within this align. So we have rotation of this round tooth. We have a tip problem in the anterior, and it's relatively simple with the light. But here we had a problem, so we addressed this, we corrected it. It's no problem. But at the end, we faced a bit of anchorage loss, yeah, because the whole segment um, lower left four, lower left five moved easily. So we had a small gap because the setup they have is also just five to five. And um, this case in our taster, we obviously talked about that already. This was a solicitor with the main concern of the correcting of the centrals in the upper. Straightforward case, generally speaking, we've done it. I thought we are happy, patient complained and said then basically that her buckle corridor went in. She came with a picture when she was 16, wrote a nice solicitor letter like they do. And she complained that something has happened in the back and it feels weird, doesn't look good, and she wants it to be corrected. 
So we ended up, unfortunately, with a full case because if we treat one upper full to get the buccal corridor back out, then you have to treat the lower as well. So I've learned my lesson so far. That's why anchorage in the premal region is very, very important. And that's why I always do nowadays this rigid spin where so far I had no side effects. So since I used this system, it didn't happen anymore. So that's why. And it's, it's very simple to bond. We talked about bonding on Tuesday. It's very easy to take in and off and very short treatment time. And there's hardly any discomfort. Yeah. So we talked about the preparation of our bonding. So it's very important to get everything out there to explain the patient what we want to achieve. And that we, whatever we plan, we should think about where we want to end up at the end. So, oh. I think I jumped here a bit. So now we want to talk about um, the different cases. So again, we want to, to think about the torque control, the, the full size wire we have. And because we have that, we need to check the setup, the labial surfaces, and things like this shouldn't happen where we can clearly see that the, there's a lot of um, torque on the teeth. And when we then go through the wire sequence, we get the side effects. And the side effect is that we go from here to here, where we clearly see because we have full talking expression, we didn't check the setup, we have recession, and we, the roots are moved out of the bone. So because we have a full size uh, wire and we have a good precise bracket, we shouldn't do it. Also things we shouldn't do is just focus on putting brackets from K9 to K9, because if we have rotated K9s, these cases are very hard with Invisalign. So this, we should use the power of light, but we should always use a splint on four and five to get these canines in, otherwise it's not happening. So always, always use the splint. Yeah, it's even if you want even more retention surface, because the lingual surfaces of these um, brackets is too small. Then you can even think about having no clues on these anchors, on these splints, but when you deep on the case, you need to shave these occlusal pads off before you click them off. Otherwise, it can happen that part of the enamel fractures. Again, think about the, the, if you want an enlarged um, slot and what kind of technique you want. So now we're going through some cases where mistakes were happening and we're going to go through these mistakes because that's how we learn. That's a very easy case, some angulation pop. We had a class one normal bite. The braces were fitted. Yeah, this was with incognito with the, we, quite a fragile uh, spin. So here in this uh, wire, so what is done not as nicely. So there are a few points I wouldn't do. Number one, in this area, we have a wire poking out. So this, I would apply some flow or dry gel on it. There's no need for stop mechanics to create space. And we go from the self-ligating slot to the main slot, which means we have different planes, which causes an extrusion of this lateral. It's not needed here in this case. We can go straight with an O12 Naitai in the main slot all the way through. Also here on this side, you see it's a wrong ligature. Uh, a short lick should have been used instead. So we've learned that already before. So here we have no full engagement, a short ligature because we have active forces on this packet could have been used instead like we learned in the ligature module. Yeah, here what we can see is that the wire in this case here is not engaged properly. So there can be two different reasons for that. Reason number one is wire positioning. The wire shifted to one side. And reason number two is IPR was planned and not been executed and therefore the teeth are wider than in the final setup and the wire sequence has been changed too quickly. In this case, it was a wire positioning because if we look at the wire position, we clearly see that 
the first order band is distal of the canine, and in our case, it is not. So it's very clear that the wire is shifted. So here, the, the first order band is very close to the premolar, and here, therefore, the wire can't be engaged, and therefore, you lose information. So be careful in the positioning of the wire, and if you need to do IPR, then do it in a 1622 night But of course, it's a very simple case, so it's quite easy to finish this. Next case is a bit more severe crowding. Again, same mistake done here. We go from a slot to the incisor wing. There's no need. Either you go on a self-ligating slot all the way through with an O40 night tie, or you go in O12 directly into the slot and just use um, steel ligatures here. Same thing. Why is this engaged? Why is this engaged? So choose the right ligature, short ligatures. Yeah, O-ring is only used if the wire is passive. Here, the power chain over ties, so not elastic over ties. Obviously, nowadays, we would do the elastic, the blue over ties. Yeah, so very, very important. Here are some um, e brakes cases. Yeah, here is also not being um, used a splint. Again, the end of the wire is needs to be covered. Yeah, so I mean, these are very easy cases with light and they're very simple to address. Yeah, here, obviously here again, wrong ligature. This is also an, uh, probably a ligature from the buckle technique. Here are half a cruise pads, but no splint. I wouldn't do that. I would do a splint. Yeah, very, very important. Also, just uh, to point that out, in e brace the midline is marked with the laser. So the midline markation, it doesn't disappear like any other system where it's just a color. So you will see that the midlines are marked very, very nicely with e -praise. Next case is a case from Brazil. I think I showed that in the taste menu uh, as well. We have relatively poor oral hygiene. We had a full class two bite, but that wasn't her main concern. The bite was acceptable to her. The main concern was upper right two and the front teeth. So she had treatment before. You can see that here with a, a lingual retainer in place, poor oral hygiene, low right six had to be extracted. But our focus was literally just to address the problem. And because it was such a huge overcheck, we can easily just apply an upper light case. There's no interferences in bite. Yeah, so because if we do light case, we always have to think about if the people will bite on these braces. So these biomechanics here, they didn't make sense. Like I said to you before, I use power chain sometimes to support the rotation. In this case, it did, does the opposite because it will pull this way and this way will encourage this tooth to this to rotate even more. So what would I have done differently nowadays is I would probably place a power chain from here to here to mesorotate this tooth and to this to rotate this tooth. So these things you can do with power chains to support the derotation. Here, then we use the elastic over ties and power chain. We talked about these just to get the wire engaged and to pull backwards to get the angulation. Here, we use the tip chain, like we discussed before in our ligature. So you clearly see now that how I our mix match all the different ligatures I've taught you today. Here, tip chain. And here, an elastic overtie. Yeah, remember this tip chain, how it works. Yeah, we go from zigzag like a seesaw in the front. So it's very, very important to support any kind of tipping. So these ligatures are very important. And hopefully, as soon as this is all over, we can also meet face to face to do a bit of hands on. So here we did then elastic over ties and power chain to close the rest of the spaces. Again, all hygiene is quite poor. And that's why you have to expect always some pleading when you debond the case. So a laser sometimes helps to stop the pleading, or you just need a bit of time and use some cotton rolls. Some gum recontouring could have been applied here at the end, especially here. 
um, to improve the result even more. Next case is basically where we combine again the different linkages here. We have again the tip chain. Can you see here, like we have done here, zigzag, zigzag. So he has all zigzag on tip chain to get this mesial tipping going. And if you then do that, you close the space, you can have really, really quick results in a few weeks' time. So this is the true power of lingual light. You get very difficult movements with Invisalign, you can achieve very, very quickly with Lingua. And the cost is not more. So you can charge the same as Invisalign, and because you're quicker, you save money, because you are more efficient. This is also a classic case of the upper right. A central is angulated, very tricky case with Invisalign. You need a lot of refinements. With a light case, you don't do it. So you engage the wire fully, with a um, short ligature, because it's an active force, O4, T9 tie, short ligature, power chain to distalize these seeds from each other to create a space here to allow this upper right central to rotate in. And then you have in three weeks, you have changes from red to green. It's quite impressive. You change the ligature, you go to a 1622 night tie, an elastic overtie, and you secure the elastic overtie with a short. Ligature. Then again, three weeks later, um, here I tried out the tipping tie by Sugiyama because I haven't invented my own ligature yet. It was in my earlier days to get a bit more angulation control. So you go to yellow. So the, the difference between three and six weeks wasn't that much. So green to yellow, but it's still going the right way. So six weeks later, we already improved. Nine weeks later, again, 1622 Nitai, we are staying in the same wire. And nowadays, I would probably go in 1825 Nitai with e plays but same ligatures and power chain to get to the blue line. So it's really, really impressive. Also, nowadays, what you could think about is you can apply a small nickel titanium push coil in here just to open that space up, and then you might create a bit of a diastema and then the teeth are upright and you just close the space in a few weeks, a few days even. Yeah, so here, elastic overtie, power chain to close the space and we are finished with the case. Some incisor um, decontouring with a soft flex disc and the patient is happy. Yeah, so here you see I planned some extrusion in the setup with the curvature here and that I will reduce then later. Um, and it creates another wow effect for the patient and makes them happy. Then you replace fixed retainer. So four months treatment time for that. What you plan is what you get. So take care of your setup, the talk, especially. Next case, same situation. We have a torque problem on the canine. We have an overlap of the central. We see that quite often. We don't want to change the bite. We used a short ligature to make sure the wire stays in the slot as long as possible without disengaging. Then we reorder last wire, which is full size, 1825 night tie. And we go through the wire sequence, 1622 night tie with elastic over ties. I secure it with the steel tie again, because there was a lot of power on it. Let the wire express, let the torque express here. I have to change now to my tipping tie, elastic tipping tie, to get more distal tipping here. In this case, the torque already expressed quite well in 1622. Now I would probably go in an 1825 night tie because with uh, incognito you get three wires with the light, with e -brace you get five wires with the light. So you have more flexibility. The tipping tie, again, as a refresher, we know how it works now. So we need just to exercise that a bit. And then we use the tipping chain combined with, uh, with uh, the tip, tipping tie with the tip chain in one case. So here's the tipping tie and the tip chain. So I combine all the different system and leakages in one case to get maximum efficiency. Yeah, but you need to tell your patient that they might not be happy with you for um, a few days because there's a lot of power on it. And as a last case, of course, when you work with dentists together who need to place some veneers, sometimes you get patients like this, 
um, where you need to close some spaces and mainly shift the teeth, the front teeth. Of course, the bite wasn't good, but the patient came from abroad, had no time. So all we wanted to improve the front area, close the spaces so that veneers could be applied, very straightforward case. And then after alignment looked like this, bite is not good, but it was a compromise from day one. And then after, again, what we plan is what, we, what we've what we achieved. And with the fine restoration, then we went from here. He had some maybe not as nice veneers, but the patient was happy to here. So we are quite flexible. So what are my tips for e-brace light is prepare and before and after. So show them what you can do because people like to use it. So basically, patients can use the model and are very well happy. Yeah, so they have the model from before, they show it and they can see in the mirror the before and after. So this is powerful things you can do with the light and people are very, very happy. Yeah, so also you can use the stop mechanics to create some space. Yeah, like here we know that from the other systems as well. And we have the buttons like I showed you before, initial phase to start the derotation. Yeah, you hook them in, but we talked about it. So lingual appliances is for me a very nice tool to be different, to offer patients something else than just the liners. If they are interested in the liners, they are certainly also interested in lingual. So sometimes you have to choose the battles and what is more efficient and easier with which device. So think about that and then you will have success. It's a very nice practice builder. I've been doing it now for years and years. Um, so after today, um, we will send a list of patients of, of your names to the company and then they should come back with the certificates and then you should be able to order it. Um, for some, I think Lydia is in there as well. She will probably do full cases as well. So we can talk on an individual basis as well, um, how to deal with the full cases if you want to. But I always say you need to work with companies together where there's a future where they listen to your demands. And um, I've been now since uh, August last year, and so far they listen to me. And it's a very nice cooperation. I have no financial interest in that. I'm, I'm not getting paid by e press anything. It's just basically sharing my experience and um, so thank you very much and i'm open